Really? That's what you want to do? Yeah. You want to drink and drop a skitter? That'd be awesome. <laughs> Looks like it has some big noisy obnoxious diesel in it. Yeah. Take it down over this hill. We're in RJ's dump truck. With a trailer. What's up? <laughs> We're going to look at some equipment here. A race ready trailer. So the Dodge side doesn't want to start anymore. It is kind of weird being on this side of the camera, somebody else holding it. Like I now feel like the pressure everybody else feels, you know. So there we are, cat 955H. Thanks to RJ, it's on the trailer, it's secured, we can get it home. RJ's towing. There you go. Hit him up. <laughs> Hit him up. Dead or here. alive, we'll get back, get you back to the hive. Dead or alive, get you back to the hive, he says. I like it. He can haul anything. I think a battery just blew up. Ah, I got them under warranty.
Well, it looks like that terminal melted down or something. What happened was, I used the glove box, and I said, pull too much air pressure, I heated it up. So when it goes start it, it just started melting down. Now it started. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lot of wet spots. All of this is wet. Down here we're wet again. Um, this rat here kind of looks like junk to me, but... Alright, six more. And then this whole big heavy metal piece comes off. So that one's probably... What I want to do is try to catch on everything down there and just rotate it up. That way I can get to this radiator, but it's probably going to come crumbling down, and then I'll need like the backhoe to put it back on there. Get the air gun weasel there. I'm going to try to weasel this ratchet on the nut on the back side here. We're going to do the same thing on this bottom one. It's not one to bend past that bottom skid plate. This plate right here is not one to bend past there. So it moved, or I really doubt it bent that because that is some hefty freaking steel. Our only option is to loosen these. I still want to take them out because then the whole thing's going for a ride. But it looks like the radiator is attached to this piece, which is kind of nice. The idea is if I can get enough movement out of it, I should be able to rotate this whole thing down and lay on there and just work on that radiator then. But first gotta find an impossible way to get those bolts out. I was able to get a ratchet snuck in back there. So 
now just comes to loosening this up and this one I don't want to take off I just want to make it loosey goosey Now that's loose. That might give us some movement that we need. I still doubt it. We're gonna try. assembly down I wasn't gonna rip it off but it's just too hard to get to all the bolts otherwise and I had no way of getting to the stuff underneath here so I guess I just got to work at stripping everything off of here and trying to find all the mounting surface sitting down here in the shop with this radiator and we got it sitting here on the forklift chained up blocked it off and I filled her with water and found our leaks and you know I hit it with the hose in here and just started tearing these fins out so rotted so all of these cores are pretty much junk to get back in there we're gonna tear them out so we're gonna tear this whole corner out solder it up to see if we can't fix it it's pretty much shot but it's like an operating table for hearts <laughs> um, we need a sawzall, a sledgehammer, yeah. and some JB weld. And two bandits. And I brought protein. <laughs> so, definitely took a large chunk out this whole corner back in here. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cores, nine, ten cores. Ended up taking out. Of course, that one got nicked because you can't get a wheel in there. So we'll do something with that. And this one back in here just keeps breaking off. But I think I finally got it sturdy. It's just going to be a little bit of a bitch to get in there. So the solder wasn't sticking. So we went in JB Weld because JB Weld fixes everything. Although some people in this shop are kind of spectacle. Skeptical? Right skeptical? Skeptical. <laughs> I knew I needed the word. I'm kind of skeptical of JB Weld. But, while it is leaking, it's not leaking as much as it was. And that was only our first coat. Here, let me see something with that quick. I kind of have another. There's a big one in there somewhere. I hope it's not down in there. It might be though. 
If I glob that whole thing shut. Like, what was that? The nuclear power plant or whatever blew up, so they just built like a dome of, of concrete around it to contaminate it. So basically, it'd be what country that was in, I don't know, but it'd be the same thing. Just built a dome of JB weld around it. Well, still got a leak in it there, but look how much water's pouring down this side. I think we still got a lot of core leaks, and that ain't good. So, my patch didn't work at all. Look how wet that is, man. And that's not just from that little spot leaking. That's like a river. I got air hooked up to the bottom of it, and I filled this thing with water. This was like my last ditch effort. Look, it's wet in here, something's leaking in there. It's leaking, this whole side's leaking in here. So now I guess it's back to the drawing board. And I'm trying to be digging in a week. Like this whole new core is 1500 bucks, which is outrageous. And even then, all these bolts have to come out and you risk breaking these bolts off in this tank they get expensive pretty quick what are we gonna do Donald get one out of an old freight line well the ones out of the international that I was gonna thought would be about the same size ain't that thick I'm really at the point now where I'm forced to go buy another core because this is just leaking too bad I can't patch it anymore like this was like a last ditch effort when the solder wouldn't grab anything and the more I'd cut away at it, the more stuff would break. I washed the dirt out and it just started leaking like crazy. The mud was the only thing keeping antifreeze in this, so we're done with this. But to do that, I gotta get this radiator part. And uh, so you can see I got a bunch of these bolts out and I got cocky and I'm like, I'm just gonna try to see if they back out and I broke two of them off. So what I've been doing is just kind of putting a torch heating them up after about a minute put a ratchet on there they back right out so it's been doing pretty good daniel's giving me a hand here he's helping clean out some of the dirt on that side so i can get my socket on all those nuts and then we gotta flip this heavy thing over and you know it's the same thing down this side it's a little bit harder because i got these fins in the way and these they're just like a protectant i guess so that the fan blows apart it doesn't put a hole in your rad but I figure if it's kind of hard to get a ratchet on there, I'll just hit them down with a hammer. I'm done with them at this point. So this side was definitely more pain to butt. You can't get a socket in there, so you gotta do everything with the, with the wrench. Just a bit slower. Oh, right there, drop a bit. Then you run the chainsaw. Cool. Very cool. And there you go, there's all your cores. I guess in theory, if you knew which ones were leaking, you could come in here and solder them up to the top instead of doing all the pinch off. But, look at this, I don't even know what that is. It's coming out of the course. People trying to put junk in it, trying to block this thing off. So this thing's been junk for years. So I'm just gonna end up paying the money and replacing it. I don't have much of an option. Hopefully, uh, get a new gasket with it if not i'll just gasket goop that back up now here's the 
the ones that broke off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to track down a pair of vice grips, which is seemingly impossible because I use vice grips for permanent solutions to keep stuff held together. I'm going to go track down some vice grips, put some heat on here, and turn them right out. Oh well. I didn't even need vice grips. That came right out. That's how good I am. You don't want to breathe this stuff in. You don't want to get it on your hand, which is why I'm not wearing gloves. It's leaking a little bit. You can see it's leaking out that plastic bag. I don't know if it ate through it. It's from running the torch by it. I don't know. But after it drains, I'm going to have to find something else for it. This one should be all right because this cap is higher. Yeah, this is a uh, scraper. <laughs> Huh? What is? Oh wow, he's in muriatic acid. Try not to put that on YouTube. Maybe fatal to swallowed, avoid eye contact, skin contact, cause blindness if it goes in your eyes. Metal cleaning, brick cleaning. Etching concrete, swimming pools. Do not mix with chlorine. Not allowed to feed it to children. So it's been uh, sitting here for a while. It's starting to get more and more green. And it must be cleaning up some rust because it clogged up the hole that we had in that plastic. It's not really leaking anymore. Bales is dumping water to delete whatever leaked out. You know, because we're environmentally friendly on the possums. On the, on the possum kingdom. <laughs> what, what do we say we're going to call my village? The possum villa. Villa de possum. Here in Villa de possum. <laughs> we're eco friendly. <laughs>
So I was having trouble tracking down a, a brand new core. So what I did is I took a bunch of measurements and I had one built. I think it was a company out in Michigan, but I went through a, a guy semi-local about 80, 80 miles away, but I used this company before for like charge air coolers and stuff. So the guy was very knowledgeable. He got some measurements for this head plate here. And after we got that, we got core counts and dimensions for the rest of it. And I was able to get one built. So it was about 1260 bucks is what I ended up paying. So there's other companies out there. I could have got it paid, got it uh, probably a day or two sooner, but by the time I think got shipped, it was about 1500 bucks. And uh, I kind of like supporting uh, the local shop that I use. They're good people over there and they seem more knowledgeable and they're gonna have better customer service and they were cheaper. <laughs> I went ahead and I got all brand new stainless steel bolts. And there's a spider and, and lock washers. So, you know, here's, here's the old bolts. But as soon as they're rusted up, I don't really have a need to reuse them. Oh, I think I got metal on my finger. That sucks for me, doesn't it? That will block off cores if I don't cut it. And that's basically how it's going to go the rest of the way around, with the exception of these end pieces here, which are covered in mud. And it will go here. The nice thing is, this core is a little bit thinner than the other one. It's just, I guess it's cantered cores and offset, so they can just make the whole thing a little bit lower profile. It's a little bit newer. It's not as ridiculous as that last one. The last one was too bulky. So, with that, I can get a screw gun in here. person drinks more coffee like this but the mug doesn't hold enough and that's and this is just plastic hard plastic so it won't break it's like one of the shakers for like protein drinks or something but your body don't need protein drinks your body needs coffee I'll drink it all day long all right I don't feel like doing this next part everything from here on out is heavy and it's kind of like a two-man job but just one of me i would have had help last night if i got back home too late and to get everything put together so i didn't have the extra hand so now it's morning time it's heavy it's definitely lighter than the other one it's got like 13 000 pounds of dirt built up on it
get started. Now. Everything shifted. I think this thing got bent. Nothing's in there quite right. So I'm trying to like pry everything. It's really not that easy. It's all thick steel. See, the problem is my bolt holes up here this is down there so i think this lip got bent up and so i was trying to press it down the whole thing pressed down with the skid steer but it wasn't even bending it so not to fear i have a new plan the new plan is i'm gonna bolt the thing in anyway these bolts here i'm gonna see after the whole thing bolts in if it doesn't draw it together and i can try to sneak a couple bolts in there it's very tight to work in there though, which kind of sucks. But I figure worst case scenario, if I can't, still can't get bolts in there, I'm just gonna throw some tack welds on here and call it good because I can't really be breaking this thing. You know, it's a brand new core, so. I do everything in my $3 Walmart knife, man. So after about an hour of, of hydraulic bottle jacks, firewood, hammers, pry bars, and beating the crap out of this thing into place with a backhoe, I was able to get four of the six bolts in. So there's two on this side. 
There's also two on this side. Another one, of the, another one of the problems I discovered is this track was leaning like this and it was leaning into this arm and it looks like somebody tried to weld a plate in there to try to buy themselves time before it chewed through this arm but I, I'm not comfortable with that so part of the problem is the wear pad over here is missing but you think that would tilt it this way so we go on the inside here and here's this wear pad, and it's supposed to have like a spring that pushes down on it. But look how much, I guess it wore down too much, the springs are broken, I'm not sure. So, in order to replace all those wear pads, you gotta split the track, pull the idler group off. And I just don't have time to do all that. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna loosen these bolts up top here, try to get all the pressure off here, and see what we're working with. Then, I'm gonna try to pry this up as much as I can and slip piece plates of steel in there until I get the desired height that I want and then I'm just going to tack weld it I guess I only really have up front here if I make it long enough I can go to the back and tack weld it back here too but that should be enough to get the job done and then also on this side on the on the bottom I want to do the same thing so that's my plan for that right now that propane bottle, I guess, dropped down off the track while I was working over here. And then I was moving the machine around. I got caught up in the track and bent all up. And it just looks dangerous to me. So I just had the valve open, drain all the propane out of that can. Um, I was able to, to wedge it out. So I think it was getting pretty close to blowing up there. So that's kind of scary. I didn't even realize it was under there. So it is what it is. I had two pieces of angle iron or each quarter inch. So I had them together, makes half an inch. And I shoved it in there. I took the pressure off the jack. And certainly things moved back this way a little bit. But I have about half inch clearance using the tape measure between this point and this point. Before it was zero. Because I mean it was riding on there and then it slipped right on there. I mean there's a lot of pressure. out of oxygen it just that's why I can't cut that oxygen no problem look at that that's what happens when your bottles run out I kept turning the torch back more or the oxygen up more and more and more and more and more it just wasn't enough well since I had to go get my oxygen bottle filled for the torch I just went out, stopped at the store and grabbed a couple of these flat pieces here. This is all eighth inch. So I need half inch, cut two one foot sections out of this, and that should be the first wear pad. Ow!
this is what I got to work with. Now I put a notch in this bar. That way we can put another piece of metal in there and try to smack it back. So they do it at an angle because the track's in the way here. But I'm not going to get the whole way through. The bottom piece is the whole way through. And the whole thing kind of sits back like this. So that's, that's the reason. And there's this... Obviously this front end got wore down pretty quick. Now on this side, there's not much I can do. I got an eighth inch here on the bottom part. And then I'm not putting anything on the top because it's just going to have to move. There's still the spring retention in here, so I can't get a bar back through there. And to disassemble that, I have to take the whole idler group out. And that's not going to happen. So... call this a farmer weld that's what I call this that's not the right way to do this because it's a horrible horrible weld however however just need to keep from moving too much it'll probably just break apart anyway here's the moment of truth we'll see how much the track moves oh yeah it moved a lot that worries me I don't know if that was enough or not. No, we're good. Because that doesn't come anywhere near that. I don't think we'll get two inch angle in there, but uh, I stand correct. Look at that. See that gap? That's going to hold that off. So that's actually gonna, I can't believe it. If it holds, if everything holds, that'll work. But it's nothing that would really move around too much, so I think we'll be all right. The idea is that the idler moves back and forth against those wear pads. Um, I don't foresee the idler moving too much. It'll probably kind of stay in one spot from here on, uh, just because everything's kind of already maxed out and wore out, so. That well, that top wall is no good. We have to try to weld over it. Very much good. All right, that one penetrated at least. Alright, so I put a couple hours on this on this cat here. Everything seems to be running good. The uh the power shift is whining a little bit and so I dumped some more oil in that, but I guess I didn't buy enough. It probably leaked down as it sat for years. It probably has a small leak or something because there's a bunch of there's a bunch of stuff caked to it, which typically means there's some kind of leak. But I just got to go to the store and get more, but it's getting kind of late today. But thing did really good, even without having any cleats walled on there. And I still might weld some one this week. I don't know, but I got a big excavation project happening behind my house. That's for another video, but I started on that today. Basically, there's this big wide stretch of dirt here. It runs 300 foot and it's probably 20 foot wide and about 13 foot tall and it has to disappear. So it's kind of level with the trailer right now. Uh, I don't know, I haven't really gone into it a whole bunch, but that trailer is not gonna be there much longer. Getting ready to build and excavating this as part of the build, build project. So the reason I bought this is because 
the amount of dirt I had to move, the buddy price would be probably like 10 grand for somebody to move it. And it would probably end up being more, honestly. So I decided just to buy the machine. And then if I want to keep it cool, if not, I can get rid of it and get my money back out of it. So I'm not dumping too much money into excavating here. And it's fun to play with. But there you go. Machine's doing good. Our, our repairs worked. The temperature's holding steady. Probably needs cleaned up in a paint job. But whatever. I'm not worried about it as long as it runs. Stay tuned for excavation.